I want to think about this one. What questions would you ask? I'm looking for three people. What questions would you ask to this particular statement? So if you, if you heard somebody say this, what I hear about sheep farming affecting our environment today is very concerning. I think the land would be better off if we simply didn't have sheep. What question would you ask of that person to begin a dialogue? Other than, are you crazy? <laughs> Help me out here. Yes? What exposure to the environment or, or uh, farming have you, have you had in the past? Yeah, good. So that's interesting. Tell me more about your experience. What led you to that conclusion? What else? What have you heard? What have you heard? What have you heard? Yeah. What do you eat? What do you eat? <laughs> yeah. Another fair question. OK. <laughs> And then share your perspective through values. That's the thing that's absolutely crucial, is you've got to share your perspective through values, because that's what matters, your ability to connect as a person first, as an expert second, because that's how they'll relate to you. So again, sharing it through your values. Listen, ask, share, role play exercise. So if I took advice from all these so-called health experts, I swear I'd never read again. Seems everything is bad for you these days. So what do stakeholders want from you? We know this from our research, the most recent research we've done. What works in terms of responding to them? That, you can, that they can understand you, right? That they can understand what you're talking about. So you're speaking in a language that's easily understood, easily appreciated. They themselves have similar responsibilities or experiences. So as a mom, a dad, a sister, a brother, a farmer, somebody in the community, somebody from South Australia, somebody from WA, make a connection so they have an appreciation that you share some of their experiences. They are anxious for you to tell them what to do. Not specifically, but give them some general guidance. Give them permission to believe that what they want to do is OK, and that their guidance just feels like the ethically or morally right thing to do. Right? So here's what it might sound like to somebody to respond to that last question. You know what? You're spot on. I hear it too. All the foods you should never eat, it's confusing. But as someone who works with food scientists who have dedicated their careers to this, what I hear is that balance is the key. All foods can fit within a healthy diet. It's all about moderation and staying active. And besides, I'm not willing to give up my Twix, right? So you're embracing it. You're acknowledging their concern. You're embracing the conversation. You're embracing skepticism without validating misinformation. And then you're giving them the information they're looking for. All right, so we've got time for just a couple more questions on this. This one's going to be a little bit tougher, but I'm going to be looking for you to ask some questions about how you might engage this person in a conversation. So you've just met them sitting at a wedding reception. You strike up a conversation. They say, you know, I am so hungry, but I just gave up eating all meat. Those videos of sheep exports turn my stomach. I just can't bear the thought of those helpless animals being abused. You know what I mean? OK. So think about that for a minute, and then raise your hand and help me understand how would you begin to have that conversation? What questions would you ask of that individual to think about how do I engage them in a values-based uh, conversation? Because I can tell you from my experience, again, from the pork industry, when we were attacked, it felt like somebody kicked me in the stomach. I mean, it just brings you to your knees in times like that. So I get the strong emotional reaction, but how do we go from a visceral reaction to a strategic engagement? Questions? Are you rubbing your hands, or do you have an answer? No, I'm rubbing my hands. OK. okay. <laughs> Would you like to give it a shot? Yeah, I think you probably start by validating what you're saying, so you're going to get all that made into sick as well. Um, yeah, yep. And maybe go into a little bit about the commitment on your farm and what you do to make sure that animals are well cared for in, in the environment where you operate. Other questions? Yes? What percentage of farming do you think that is? What percentage of farming do you think that is? That's a question I'd be asking. You'd be asking them? Yeah, do you think that's all of it? Or do you think it's bad actors? Or do you know, what percentage? Yeah. What's your view of that? Well, it's what I've seen on TV, so it's what I believe. So then how would you respond to that? Well, we've had, like, we have one or two really bad operators in the Western Sports Journal. You know, and we're, actually, we're actually trying to stamp this out. Yeah. This just upsets me, too. It shouldn't be like this. Yeah. So I would start with that rather than asking them what percentage do you think this is. This makes me sick, too. We're trying to stamp it out. Because the, the problem I have is this doesn't reflect. I've worked with hundreds of farmers. This doesn't reflect the commitment they have. And I know they are as troubled by it as you are. And that puts you on that same values plane with them. Yeah, James? I was just going to say that um, no matter where you stand on those issues, when you have that conversation, that person's going to be a bit alarmed that we don't have any control about what happens on a boat or once it leaves our, our control in the sail yard. So I know when I have that conversation online with people about my sheep, I can tell them I look after their welfare as well as I do and as well as I care. Yeah. 
But they got me when they say, yeah, but are you, are, do you have any control when it goes to the slaughterhouse? Yeah. Any control when it's on the truck? I, I don't. Right. That's a problem for us. It is a problem. It is a problem. And that's where those, those verification systems that we talked about in terms of self-governance really come into play and being willing to say, the other thing that has to happen in the industry is if there is a bad actor, the first voice in that conversation that should come out publicly is the industry. Because if you're, if you're silent, you're, com you're complicit. Not just complacent, but you're believed to be complicit. So if you say nothing, it ends up being quite damning. And so the opportunity is to come in and say, but here's how you can do that. You can condemn the action without necessarily throwing anybody under the bus. What we saw on those videotapes, we found repulsive as well. It's inconsistent with our values, with the ethics, and what we expect of producers, and also inconsistent with what we see on farms all across Australia. We look forward to better understanding what happened so we can make sure that it doesn't happen again because not only is it inconsistent with what consumers expect, it's inconsistent with the standards we hold ourselves to. It makes Andrea very right, doesn't it? We need to own that. And we need you have to own it. We need to be better. Absolutely. You have to own it because if you don't, the assumption is, well, everybody's like that. Because if you, if you remain silent, then the assumption is, well, the reason they said nothing is because it represents the industry. And that's a real problem. Thank you.